Hi. Our project is DSI training, which is creating a Discord bot to help data science instructors. Meet the team. We got Chaitan as our main lead, me, Jacob, the machine learning engineer, Peter, another machine learning engineer, and Maddox, another machine learning engineer. Then we got Yuji as our data scientist. All right, so this is the problem that our project seeks to solve. Um, the current AI camp needs a scalable way to train a large number of instructors in a short period of time with a lean leadership team. And so the current training program, it's not adaptable enough to teach the instructors the technology they need. And it also needs more strategies for engaging students, especially the ones who are quiet or distracted. And finally, um, the problem is that AI Camp's support team faces a lot of questions. Many of these questions are repeated, and the volume of questions means that the support team is not able to get to everyone. So this is what we'll be seeking to solve. Our, our solution was uh, to make a Discord bot that is able to answer questions posed by instructors, and this can help cut the stuff and make the process of training instructors more efficient, and the end product uses LLMs and line chain to ingest our training documentation. It's able to answer questions asked by instructors at any particular moment in time. Okay, so I'll just give you guys like a quick demo of our product. Can everyone see this? Yes. So one thing our bot can do is help like DSI trainers or DSI instructors mm -hmm. like help interact with students. So for example, um, you could ask it, like, how do I deal with distracted students? And I just wait a few seconds to respond. So if this works, we just replace Blake basically? No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe if he's not responding fast enough, you know? but yeah, so, um, you know, create an engaging learning environment, redirect their attention. So yeah, that's pretty good. And then another thing is um, the DSI protocol can be like very lengthy and can be like very difficult to remember everything. So uh, if you forget something, for example, like um, what should I do when my students don't show up. And you can also ask the other things such as like, what's the specific like number of absences policy, that type of thing. So yeah, I'll just like give you the protocol in case you forget it. So, yeah. Um, another thing is like, uh, another scenario is like if there's scheduling confusion or if you don't know what to do. So you can ask, um, it's two o'clock on the first day, what left to do? So yeah, I'll just give you like the schedule for that day. In case you in case you forget it, so yeah. Okay, our tech stack. So we coded everything in Python, and our main tools were Langchain and OpenAI, namely the GPT three point five Turbo model, and we implemented the Discord bot using Discord.py. And then um, for our front end, we didn't really have anything because it's a Discord bot, right? So it was just really the standard like Discord user interface. Yeah, and then I'll hand it off to Jacob for the rest of the presentation. So best practice for ma management, a project was made in GitHub so everyone can collaborate and share code effectively. There's a meeting every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time and occasional meetings on Saturday if needed. There's a Discord server that Peter made and everyone joined. Design, like what Yuji said, since it was a chatbot, there wasn't much code for the front end. So the only thing we really had to do was just make an avatar 
for the Discord bot and coding. There were three different files that contained code. They include run.py, gpt.py, and discord.py. You can probably figure out the meanings off those files and the co code that they uh, hold. And the code was tested in the Discord server that Peter made and separate servers as well. And then you click the GitHub link and here's all the GitHub and the readme, which helps you set up if you want to test the bot by yourself. And then, yeah. All right, so now for what we learned making this project, first of all, of course, programming a responsive Discord bot, we wanted it only to listen in specific channels and respond to the users which are asking it. And we needed to make a data bank, so to speak, of for our AI to read our information from. And so this ended up being a folder full of text files, each with um, instructional tips and various materials. And basically these just hold what the AI reads to tell the user. And we try to keep these concise because it takes a lot of tokens to read through all of that, more on that later. Also, we learn how to use AI to answer questions using that provided data I just mentioned. And to do this, we use Langchain's document loaders. We experimented using text splitters with a chatbot, but in the end, we decided on using vector store primarily. And so the reason for this, and this is the next point of what we learned, is how to balance accurate and eloquent AI. So the reason for this is because we don't want to make up new data. We want to use the data we've already provided that we know is true from our AI camp sources. And the problem was when we were using um, the OpenAI chatbot, it would make stuff up. So in the end, we settled on Langchain's vector store query, which is very accurate to the training data. However, we also incorporated OpenAI chatbot. After the answer has been generated, the chatbot makes it more personal to the user who's asking it. So the info comes from the Langchain and the personalized layer of it comes on top from the OpenAI chatbot. And this last item of what we learned is kind of part of our data bank. And it was how to use AI to summarize meeting recordings into text data. So one of our sources was a very long meeting recording, four hours. And that was a video. We needed to find some way to turn that into our text format. So first we cut out all the silence and the audio file. So that turned into two and a half recordings. And then we use a transcription AI to turn the audio into transcribed words. And in the end, that document was massive. It was, I think 50,000 words or something like that. And so we plugged it into ChatGPT, which made the points as concise as possible as to not waste tokens. So this kind of already covered, but some of the problems we faced were dealing with a bunch of different data formats. I mentioned the training meeting video, but there was also chat histories provided to us from the support team and training documentation made by AI camp for instructors. And so another problem, I mentioned this already, keeping answers accurate to our data, not making stuff up and also running out of OpenAI tokens. Oh uh, yeah, so success chart here. Since it's an internal tool, uh, the product success would directly depend upon the effectiveness of the responses produced by the application and the scalability of the application itself. And our application is incredibly scalable as it is a bot and it can be used at any moment. With this bot, we can go from teaching a class of six to a class of 20, and it could be used by training more, and it could be used to train more instructors efficiently, allowing us to teach more people with ease. And by answering questions, by, by answering frequently asked questions, we could take the load off the support team and allow them to be more productive elsewhere. Next steps. So some next steps we can do is keeping previous user messages since we tried incorporating that, but we we weren't successful to keeping previous user messages. Handling conversations with multiple people. Time will only tell how well the bot can do with a number of people. So if you want to scale it, we got to make sure it can actually have multiple conversations. And then as long as this bot runs in the server, you're going to have to refine the data and check for duplicate question and answers to prevent hallucinations and keep the questions accurate. That is our presentation. And if you want to ask some questions to a bot, just type them in chat. All right. Do we have any, do, I have some questions for the team, but do we have any questions for the bots? Anyone? 
Or, uh, can you pull up the bot, please? I have a question for it. Yeah. Um, can you ask it? Let me run the code first. Okay. Great. Oh, I'm running the code on my end. It should work. Uh, yeah, it's running now. Okay. Okay. Maybe how can I engage my students again if they've lost interest with my class? Up. Oh no, did, did I break it? Probably. Up. Oh, okay. There's several strategies. Challenge struggling students, positively encourage them, assign uh, student advancing to display materials to the group. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer. Do we have any more questions from the audience? All right, if not, um, I think, you know, I think one of the big thing, one of the big problems of solving is engagement uh, with, with our instructors. Uh, you know, oftentimes, like during the summer, instructors have a question and then either myself or um, Sachi or, or Mike or someone else on our internal team uh, would be dealing with like another issue at the time and then we might not be able to like get to them immediately. Um, so I think like having, having like a Discord bot where they could just answer, uh, ask that question to the bot and get an answer immediately would certainly help with like boosting the engagement of our instructors. But I think um one question I had is I think the the usability of an application like this depends on like how updated how, how up to date like the information that it's pulling from. For example, like if you know it were using resources that mention like the use of CoCalc, that probably wouldn't be useful like this year since we used Replit and used CoCalc last year. So how so do you have a way to like keep like the information like always up to date? Well, if we wanted to keep the information up to date, we would probably have to have a team that just like once a year or every six months, they'd have to update the data files that we have in the bot. So it's it would only be up to date if there's a group that just keeps on the updating the info. All right, I see, I see. All right. Is there anyone else? Anyone else in the audience that has any questions? So I I, I personally think this this is going to be quite useful, like like especially like when you, when you think about um you know if we're going to increase our scale we need more instructors and if we want to increase our quality we need making sure everyone's teaching with the same kind of philosophy right. We used to basically train our instructors using, you know, crash courses, uh, but, you know, it's not like, for example, um, you know, they will be able to go through, you know, everything, you know, there's no way for us to check that. Um, so I, I definitely think, you know, this is going to be useful. Like if people have questions, you know, they can uh, get their questions like answered. Um, but I also think, um, you know, you guys might want to think about, you know, like, like this tool here actually depends on uh, the instructors actually be able to care and ask the right questions, right? And that's that's a huge you know prerequisite. But when you think about it, people who are asking those questions that are likely to be more engaged, it's never really a content problem and they're gonna find out these things, right? So it's really about the middle por middle portion where they're gonna really ask those questions, but you know they they want to do a good job. How do we get them engaged? So I would encourage you to think about, you know, how do you have uh, something to walk people through, right? So without them asking questions, you, you know, they can walk through. Um, but, you know, we're, we're building a version of that called Nova, right? So we're, we're building that. Uh, but I think what are you, you know, down here uh, is going to be something really, really interesting. It's going to be something that's going to be helpful, you know, for um, for engaged instructors to get answers and, you know, reduce the amount of like questions that are going to, you know, go into the support team. So this is something you know, we would be uh, definitely interested to deploy it and use it. Yeah. So congrats, guys. Yeah.